Thanks for clicking on the video. And here today at Nerd Mimic, we are presenting a comic book. And yes, it's a SpongeBob comic. I never thought I would buy one of these. And I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of SpongeBob, but I had to get this and you could sort of guess the reason why. It has a homage to Dungeons and Dragons here. You can see on the cover. And uh, this cover, of course, is a take on the classic player's handbook for first edition, which we have here in hand. And I wasn't aware of this until I saw it in the Legends and Lore uh, art book that we just did 100% flip through recently. And on page 172, there is a great depiction of the cover here. I thought, wow, I just had to check this out. So that's what we did here. We obtained the copy. And we're going to do a 100% flip through and uh, let you know what we think about this. So while I'm getting the comic out of the bag and protector, if you need the channel, hopefully hit that like and subscribe as that certainly helped me out to go to a thousand. We definitely love Dungeons and Dragons adjunctive material that we like to present here. And this definitely was fit the bill. All right. So thanks for listening to that. And once again, we got the wonderful cover here. And we'll take a look here at the first page. And so there is a table of contents here. There are four sort of small stories and they're not all D&D related. I'll let you know that, spoiler alert. Uh, the coolest thing is actually at the very end. So hopefully you stick around and I'll show you that. So the first story here we have, it's called Krill the Reconqueror. And as you may be able to guess here, this is sort of like a take on uh, Conan the Barbarian. So you have this main character here. It's a Krill character. And he thinks he's living in the uh, sword and sorcery uh, world. And his speech is uh, written in a sword and sorcery manner. Um, so that's pretty cool to... Uh, read that. Spongebob in the meantime is playing his room with his uh, action figures but this Krill uh, interrupts his play and basically this Krill sort of views everything in a uh, fantasy uh, type uh, setting so when he sees Spongebob he sees him as this giant monster but this uh, Krill uh, goes inside Spongebob and eventually gets lodged to his eye, so now Spongebob sees everything in a fantastic uh, manner. And so this Krill lets him know that he's on this quest to restore his homeland. He presents this map, which is pretty cool. And they go on this uh, mini adventure. Once again, uh, this Krill is sort of lodged uh, and paired up with his vision. So when Spongebob sees, say, this uh, a display in a store. He sees it in a fantastical castle manner. And basically, um, this krill, I guess they are treated as pests when they go to this one fast food restaurant. Um, the owner believes he's infested with krill and he calls the exterminator to get rid of the krill. Uh, so SpongeBob's sort of caught in the middle. He's uh, get basically get sprayed by the um, exterminator here and of course in their vision he's being gassed and uh, attacked by a giant so they smite him and basically they defeat the exterminator and now this krill believes he is the conqueror now he is the king and so i guess that is a, a homage to king conan of course and so that is the end of this first story. So once again, this is more of a homage to actually Conan rather than Dungeons and Dragons. So on the next page here, you can see a short little um, drawing here. And it's in the wonderful world of, and I guess there's supposed to be a take to Oz. But this story actually here, instead of being a take on Oz. It's more of a homage to Alice in Wonderland. So you see uh, Sandy the Squirrel here and she envisions Spongebob as a white rabbit and 
he's coasting down this little river, goes down this sewer gutter, and he starts to fall down. And of course, that's Alice falling down the rabbit hole. So they come out, and you, they end up at a tea party here. And the humor is pretty uh, basic, as you know, with SpongeBob. It's not necessarily my cup of tea, I should say, but uh, yeah, it's passable. And basically, later on here, it's very short, this uh, story. She sort of wakes up as SpongeBob's trying to wake her up, and they just uh, they continue on with their regular day. So that's a very short little vignette there. Now, over here, they're just talking about uh, some quick satires about fantasy authors. And then here is a cool two-page drawing. This is more like Dungeons and Dragons. Got a brave warrior, got a henchman there. All right, so this next story here, now this once again is also unfortunately not related directly to Dungeons and Dragons. This is more a superhero story, sort of like a, a satire on Doctor Strange or Doctor Faith and dealing with the uh, mystical arts. So yeah, you have these uh, characters and these are SpongeBob's action figures that you saw in the beginning of the comic that he was playing with. And this is a short little story about them going on a mystical uh, journey. And I have to admit, I don't think it was that great of a story. Uh, certainly the, the humor, I once again, I think it's pretty basic. All right, so this next portion is actually the best part of the comic and might be worth the price of the mission. Uh, you'll have to be the judge of that. So this here is a take on Endless Quest. There's classic Dungeons and Dragons choose your own adventure books. So here you can see this is supposed to be book five, Dangers and Deadbolts, Monster Boat of Frightfulness. Pick your own pre predicament book. And uh, so yeah, there are multiple choices here. You can see here, we start off the adventure. You're about to embark on a journey into the unknown and then um, you get ready so you go on to the next uh, section which is number two you are a young adventurer in uncharted waters suddenly through the misty waters you see an ominous shipwreck in the distance as you approach you realize it is the long lost ship the gargax and uh, i'm assuming that's going to be a pun on uh, gary Gygax's name of course splintered Sea worn, torn sails drifting in the waves. You shimmy down the slimy string of seaweed in, onto the quarter deck for a look. Without warning, the, de the deck gives away and you fall in. You look up at the hole you fall through. A sea covered monster appears out of nowhere and seals the hole. You are trapped. Do you decide to explore to your left or do you decide to explore to your right? So turn to page 30. Uh, Six if you go left, so I'm going to go left. So we'll pay, go to section 36. And that's right here. And you can see the sections actually skip numbers to give the illusion that this book is bigger. And so for 36 here, as you explore, you notice that the shipwreck is inhabited. The gas lights in the main corridor are lit and there are plates of fresh food on the table. So you remember the lantern of the guy, uh, the Gargax? It is a floating prison of monsters being shipped and, and uh, to the monster prison, and it is said to be caught in a freak storm. The monsters took over and quickly lost control of the ship, which sank. Your heart is pounding as you arrive to the top of the rickety staircase. If they decide to ignore the stairs and enter the compartment mud, uh, marked rudder room, turn to page 114. If they decide to take the risky stairs, turn to page 71. So there is multiple choices throughout. So this story actually has multiple um, choices, uh, at least uh, over a dozen, probably maybe two dozen. 
and there are multiple endings. You can see here, if you pick the wrong choice, you die, the end. And you can see the joke around, wait, I made a mistake. I meant the other one. Um, there is a true ending and spoiler, it's actually section 91 here. So this is the true ending where you could be successful. But there are other endings, of course, will you just uh, end uh, such as like here. Um, so it's pretty cool. And uh, there even is uh, encounters monsters here. Um, there you can see here depicted. There is even, and let me find it for you, right here. It's a mimic. And so they call it by a different name, but obviously that's a classic mimic. It was assuming a shape of ordinary things and haunted ships are littered with them. It's about to bite off your arm if you shake the resurgent herb sats off and run down the nearby steps, go to page 40. If you're brave enough to try to fight him, go off and turn to page 44. So let's see what happens if we try to fight this mimic. We turn to page 44. And 44 is, you die instantly, like so many before you. Forget this, I'm going back to the page I come, came from. So let's suppose we did that. And you shake him off and run down the steps. Turn to section 40. So that would be over here. Good move. That was close. At the bottom of the steps, you find a door marked do not enter. You're feeling brave here. So you go in and you're in luck because it's a big bag filled with treasure lying on the table. Now, it's here for the taking. If you take the bag full of treasure, go to page 15. If you what? I don't need a second choice. I'm going to take the bag. So that's pretty funny. So let's suppose you take the bag, which of course you have to. That's the only option. You go to page 15 and guess what? <laughs> the bag itself is a mimic and so you're stuck in this loop. Uh, uh, some of those endless quest books do have loops like this and I think it's fantastic that they do have that copy and of course I'm going to be partial to mimics here. So once again, this uh, last portion of the comics, probably the best part, uh, definitely D&D &D related. And once again, it's a homage to the Endless Quest books. So I guess the only thing left to show you is the back cover, which is this. So it's a wonderful drawing. You can see the characters here uh, storming down and you got a beholder type creature lurking after them. And of course, it's a continuation of the main cover here. You can see the whole uh, picture in its full glory that is not in the Lore and Legends book. So that is my presentation on this SpongeBob comic, which once again, I never thought I would ever buy my whole life. But once again, it's an homage to Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, for me, the last part of the book was the best part of the uh, content, aside from the cover, of course. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Would you obtain a copy of this? Once again, you can see here this came out in 2017. And even then, comics were pretty expensive, uh, $5. I grew up in the days when comics were less than a buck, so, uh, so this is quite pricey. I never thought I'd pay 5 bucks for a comic, but there it is. Uh, thank you for watching, everyone. Keep on adventuring out there. So one quick addendum to add, there is an episode of Spongebob called Dunces and Dragons. It takes place in season four, episode six. It's available on Amazon Prime. So if you have access to that, you can watch it right now. I have to admit, I did that so myself and I wasn't too impressed. I have to admit the first half was more of a generic fantasy time travel story and not necessarily uh, d d related. So I was a little bit disappointed, but I just want to let you know that material is out there and you can check it out for yourself. Maybe watch it with your kids and have a blast. Thank you for listening to that.